Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. science, medicine, or philosophy. An incredible story of an ordinary girl called Trilby, who became the greatest singer of her day. Today, we would say she was hypnotized by an extraordinary man called Svengali, but even that wouldn't explain it all. For Svengali was indeed a magician. In fact, a monster who left in his wake a trail of horror and broken lives. Truly, he mesmerized you. Is that sinful? Is that bad? He gets you in his power, and he can make you do anything he pleases. Steal, even murder, anything. There is something about him that's true. Even now, I I feel strange when I say his name. Svengali. Svengali. Our mystery drama, Trilby, was adapted from the novel by Gerald Du Maurier, especially for Mystery Theater, by James Agate Jr., and stars Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Imagine Paris of the late 1800s. Paris of Puccini's La Boheme. Bohemian Paris, the Latin Quarter, the singers, musicians, young painters learning how to paint, young models modeling for their supper and dinner too. This young lady is fast becoming one of the most famous of all. She is certainly the best-known French model ever written about. Meet Trilby. That is my name. Trilby O'Farrell. Not O'Farrell. O'Farrell. Lots of people make that mistake. I just think of myself as an ordinary 18-year-old who models the face, the hands, feet, the all-together for the painters and sculptors here on the left bank of Paris. People tell me I suddenly became a world-famous singer, sang concerts all over. I don't remember any of that, truly. I don't. All I could ever sing was Sweet Alice Ben Bold. <laughs> I'll sing it for you sometime. <sighs> I'm very tired now. I'm sitting here with lots of people all around me. Some of them are crying. I, I don't know why. I don't like making people unhappy or making trouble. And that's what I said to Billy. That first day we met, so very long ago. Come in, come in. Don't stand there in the door. Uh, My name's Trilby O'Farrell. I was modeling upstairs. Oh, I'm Billy Baggett. We're all painters here, the three of us. (laughs) He means we hope to be. That's Taffy. The other one by the window is Sandy. You modeling for Durian? Yes, a a statue of a French infantry drummer boy that's wearing a silly outfit. (laughs) Well, you can tell Durian that's the biggest joke of a uniform I've ever seen. Hi. I'm Taffy. Talbot Wynn. Taffy was in the Crimean War. That's how he knows all about uniforms. Well, I got so stiff holding that flag and that drum that Dorian said I could walk about for a few minutes. And uh, my head was killing me. Oh, you have a piano. Is one of you a musician? None of us, but it's handy to lean against. 
Oh, nobody plays your piano? Can you, Truby? <laughs> Me? I've a tin ear. Oh, but I can sing one song. Oh, we have a crazy musician friend who doesn't own a piano. He comes here to practice. Oh, hello. Hello. My name is Sandy. Sandy Laird. Go on, come right in. We like interruptions. <laughs> um... You wouldn't have anything for a headache, would you? Uh, I have terrible neuralgia in my eyes. I've always had it. It just comes on and then there's nothing I can do. Sandy, Taffy, anyone got any suggestions for neuralgia? Strong coffee and close your eyes, I'd say. Well, sit down anyway, Trilly. We may have some leftover breakfast coffee I could heat up. Please, I, I don't want to make trouble for anyone. Stand Gary not. Van Gary knocked the door. This time you can't say Van Gary didn't knock. Good morning, gentlemen. Van Gary has come to practice the piano. Not this morning, Van Gary. This lady is suffering enough already. Uh, how do you do, Mamsel? Oh, please excuse me. I, I, I don't feel very well to meet many more new people. Uh, she I... poses for durian upstairs, and I was just about to heat up some coffee for her. Maybe it's Van Gary. Come help. Your name? Trilby. Ah, now. Sven Gary will sit in front of you. Trilby, look straight forward. Look into the whites of the eye. White. Keep yes, looking. Concentrate. Concentrate on the eye of Sven Gary. Well, she's smiling. Is the pen still in the head? It. It is almost, almost gone. Slangari wishes all pain to go. It was the most peculiar sensation of my entire life. I had been looking into his eyes... And then the two eyes of Svengali became one eye. And it got larger and larger until that one eye was all I could see. And around it were sparks and flames shooting out. And in the very center of that one eye, it was dark and so deep. So deep. Here, as though from the back of a very long tunnel, I could hear the voice of Svengali. Ma petit, ma petit Trilby, Trilby, no more pain, no more pain, ma petit. The strangest feeling like being carried to another place. A beautiful feeling. I cannot really describe it. Covering me with peace. Is she asleep? Her eyes are closed. She is not sleeping. Say it to her. Ask her. Are you asleep, Ruby? No. Then open your eyes and look at me. She cannot open eyes. <laughs> no. She will not be able to open the mouth. Ask her. Uh, why couldn't you open your eyes, Chubby? No. Oh. She is trying to say something, but mm. it is impossible. Now, she shall not get up from the van. Go on, ask her. She's bound by a spell. She can't move. <laughs> Sven Gurley will now set her free. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Oh, it's gone. My headache is gone. Oh, Mr. Sven Gurley, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, that's unbelievable. She's dancing about like a man. Oh, now I can go back upstairs to Dorian's and pick up my flag and my drum and pose for him without feeling like I'm dying. How can I thank you? How can I thank you enough, all of you? It's a terrible affliction. I've had it all my life. Ma petite, I... 
But it was a trippy. There is something you can do for Svengali, if you would be so kind. Do anything. Will you permit Svengali to look into your mouth? My mouth? Well, certainly. Um, ah. Mark, what do you see? When this young lady was moving and laughing, <laughs> Sven Gary suspected, huh? Oh, is there something the matter with me? Au contraire. On the contrary, dear lady. The roof of this mouth is like the great dome of the Pantheon. What a sounding board. But it is a great and sorrowful pity you do not also have musical organization. So it is. <laughs> What God has given with one hand, with the other he has taken away. Svengali goes now. He is delighted he had made the pain disappear. Au revoir, mademoiselle. You have to go, Svengali. You haven't practiced. Another time. Now I am late. Au revoir, Tafi. Sunday. Au revoir, ma petite. Oh, he's a strange one, isn't he? I can't get over it. He never touched the keyboard. Oh, I'm so terribly grateful to him, but... I don't know, he... He sort of reminds me of a skinny, hungry spider. Well, he cured my pain. You don't know what a blessing that is. And if it happens again, and of course it will, I'd go back to him like a shot. I don't know, Truby. I'm not so sure I wouldn't rather have any pain than have it cured in that unnatural way. He mesmerized you. Did you know that? No, you mean he, he talked to me? I'd heard of it, but I'd never seen it done. Well, is that bad? Well, they get you into their power, and they can make you do anything they please. Steal, even murder. <gasps> anything. Oh, you make the cold shivers run up and down my spine when you talk like that, Sandy. All I'm saying is... Be careful, Trilby. Yeah. Yes, I suppose there is something about him, but without him being in the room, I do feel sort of strange when I just say his name. Svengali. Svengali. You see, you please us all. Well, not everybody is so happy with me. No? No. Ooh. Whoever he is, he shall have to answer to the three of us. Oh, Dorian upstairs, he's not happy. He keeps asking, why can't I stay longer when I pose for him? And what do I have to do downstairs? And why can't I come tomorrow? Well, at last I had to. I, I promised him I'd sit for three days in a row. Three days we don't eat. Oh, back to the bistro on the corner for us. I'm going to pose for him in the altogether. In the altogether? Oh, well, why not? Well, truly, that means... Oh, what do I care? He's doing a statue of Venus, and it pays twice as much. And after all, 
I am a professional model. They all do it. Hey, Billy, what's the matter? Why are you leaving the table? I'm going out. But you haven't eaten any dinner, hardly. I've had enough. You hardly touch your roast potatoes. Don't you like them? Goodbye. Billy! Billy, come back! Oh, I, I must go after him. Excuse me. Please excuse me. Sally, I have a sneaking idea that Billy is in love with her. Mm, I've had that idea for some time. Are you for it? Well, how can I be against it? How does she feel about him? I don't know. I don't know where Billy went. What was wrong? Oh, nothing, I'm sure. Well, didn't he like my cooking? Well, of course he did. We all do. You know, I never see your friend Sengali anymore. Doesn't he come here to play the piano? Sengali? Yes, you know, the, the one who cured my terrible headache that day. Yes, we know, Svengali. Listen, Trilby, take a tip from me. It's not wise for you to be interested in him. One must remember that hypnotism, 100 years ago, was thought a mysterious and frightening experience. And it was pretty avant-garde for Du Maurier to make it the basis of his novel, Trilby. Even today, there are many who believe the hypnotist can cure where the doctor cannot. But what did it do to the life of that young model, Trilby? I shall be back with some of the answers in a few minutes when I return with Act Two. Trilby was fast becoming one of the better-known models of Paris. It's no wonder that Billy had fallen in love with her. Then, suddenly, one day, she disappeared. Winter became summer, and summer again became winter. The three young painters returned to London, and within a year, Billy was discovered. He was William Baggett now, the famous artist whose works hung in the National Gallery of London. His two friends, though not as well known, also painted. Sandy did portraits, and Taffy turned to commercial art. But what of Trilby? Since this is her story, we let her tell it. I knew Billy Baggett loved me, but I also knew I could not be a wife for him. I knew one day he would be a great artist, and me, a nobody. It would not be good for him to be married. The only other person in the world I really cared for was my little brother. And, and that day when, when he suddenly took ill and died, when Johnny died, I, I didn't wish to live another day. We buried him in the country near where I was born. I came away from that funeral a little crazy, I think. I, cut my hair off and I dressed like a man. I walked all the way back to Paris alone. The pains in my head that started the day Johnny died never stopped. When I reached Paris, I was going mad from the torture of it. And so I went to see the only person I could think of who could cure me. Svengali. Trilby. Ah, yes, Svengali remembers. Come in, little one. Entre, ma petite. <laughs> it has been a long time. And uh, little Billy, Taffy, and Sandy Hardy. Oh, I don't know. They moved away uh, to London. I haven't seen them. You still pause for Dorian? No, I, I haven't in a long time. I went home. My little brother died. Ah, ma petite be. Sven Gary is sorry to hear that. Sit down, sit down, my child, here by the fire. And what are those peculiar clothes you are wearing? The trousers of a workman and that cap on your head? Take it off, Trilbiji. Oh, you have cut off all your hair. And you are crying. My head hurts so you were wonderful about it once, Mr. Svengali. Do you remember? I've never forgotten. Tell me, have you eaten food, child? I will get you coffee and bread and butter and then take you to the Rue Savonarone for a good hot bath. And then you sleep. But please, can you make the pain go away? Of course. As 
when the guy ever failed, he's thrilled me. <laughs>
All he asks for is your concentration. But which piece of music am I studying? I don't remember. I, 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 I don't know where we are. I, I, I don't remember anything. Three I, years, I, morning, I, noon, and night, six, eight hours a day. Sven Gary is taking your voice, note by note I try, by note. I try, I try. Well, and you succeed, my singing dove. There is no end to your notes. Each more beautiful than the other, velvet and gold, beautiful flowers, pearls, diamonds, rubies, drops of dew and honey. You are truly a phenomenon, ma petite Trilby, but dumb. Stupid as an ox. Now watch me. Look at me, look. I want you to remain on one note. Make it go through all the colors of the rainbow. Make Svangari happy. Make Svangari sad. Make him laugh. <laughs> Make him cry. One note. I will. I will. Svengali, I will. I can. I can. Of course you can. And you will. With Svengali, you don't need an ear for music. Your eyes, the eyes of Trilby, watching, watching the eyes of Svengali. I will. I will. I can. Watch. Look. See. We begin. It's hard to believe that could have been Trilby up there. Good heavens, Sandy. How can you doubt it? Yes, it was. It was her. Our little Trilby didn't have such talent. Nowhere near it. This last Bengali is a true musician. And that takes years of study. She's no simple-minded ignorance at all. Sandy, will you stop but it? Sweet and friendly girl. This is a woman. And there is suffering on her face. I can only go by my feelings, and it is her. Heaven knows how this angel of music came to be. Well, Sven Gally taught her. Did you see her eyes glued to him? Every movement he makes conducting the orchestra? Lord, Lord, Lord. Billy, you've got to remember you're not a little lovesick boy anymore. You are William Baggett. The William Baggett. A world-renowned painter. And I'd give it all up if I could be in that monster's shoes. There she is, married to him. Did you see the way they took the curtain calls together? Hand in hand. Master and pupil, husband and wife, smiling and bowing together. She holding on to him with all that love. I, I know she saw the three of us. She, she looked right at you, Billy. Yes. And at that moment, I could have sworn her eyes, I don't know, became very wide. And then did you see Svengali suddenly turn around on the conductor's podium and the look he gave us? Yes, I did. I must say, it did make me wonder. It made me sure it was Trilby. Oh, I'm so very tired. What is this place we're in, Svengali? A hotel in Paris. We're in Paris? I'd love to take a walk to my old neighborhood in Montmartre tomorrow. May I, Svengali? Tomorrow we are going to London on the first boat train. Oh, you never let me do anything anymore. I don't have any fun. We used to have so much fun. Well, now it seems to me that I'm always asleep. And when I wake up, I'm wearing some silly long dress and, and gloves like I'm wearing now. And Marta has to help me take this off. Or, Oh, why do I sleep so much, Svengali? Perhaps you are still a little sick from the long walk you took, that unnecessary walk to Paris, after your brother died. Will you stop that? I don't want you ever to say anything again, not one word about my Johnny. You stop, you hear, you mean old man, I hate you, I hate you. Oh. And Svengali would slap you again and again if you talked to him like that. Oh, yes, I... I'm sorry, what? What did I say? 
I owe everything to you. Ungrateful, stupid, who cannot sing a note to save her life, who cannot tell one tune from another. I have made you, created you. What are you saying? Made me what? I know I cannot sing. Don't waste my time. Go to bed. No, I want to know. Sven Gali can do anything. He has made himself a singing machine. A Stradivarius of flesh and blood. It is I who am the singer thrilled me. I, me, Sven Gali. I sing with your voice thrilled me. Ah, go to bed. Frightening, isn't it? Now we know. There were two trilbies. Svengali's trilby, a sound box, and the trilby who was loved by the painter and who could never forget her. Where will it end? I shall be back in a few moments with Act Three. We are in London. For two nights in a row, La Svengali has given gala recitals at the Drury Lane Theater. Sandy, Taffy, and Bill attended both nights. On the second night, they were certain La Svengali was Trilby. They agreed, yes, her face was older, certainly the face of a woman who has experienced unhappiness, but an air of mystery surrounded her almost as if she were unaware of what she was doing on that stage. The three friends in formal dress, as indeed everyone was in the audience, sat in the second row, waiting for the concert to begin. I thought I'd gotten all over her. As you said, I was a boy then, and I'm a man now, but Toby is still in my blood, and it's so hopeless. She's the wife of Svengali, and together they've conquered the world. Last night, during the concert, every song, I saw the way her eyes followed him. Sangali's a great musician, Sandy. Everybody can derive pleasure from music. You don't find a painting making people weep the way music does. People don't shout and scream and applaud paint on a canvas the way they carried on last night right here. Yes, I'm jealous, I'm happy, and it's all so hopeless. But it's over, Billy. You have to accept that. Oh, forgive me for carrying on like this. I'm sorry. I, I truly am. Uh, Sandy, is it true that Svengali is not conducting the orchestra tonight? I thought he always conducts for her. Haven't you heard? Backstage gossip has it that they were rehearsing this afternoon, and Svengali interrupted Trilby several times, got very excited, and struck her with his baton. What? Then she fell on her knees and... and Good and, Lord! ...and cried out and, and begged him not to hit her. She said something like, I'm singing the best I can. And when she was on the floor, he kicked her. The first violinist couldn't stand it. And he made it grab for Svengali. And the next thing anybody knew, he'd cut Svengali with a knife. I never heard a single word. They must have hushed it up. Yes, cut him across the back of the neck. They sent Svengali back to his hotel. And I understand the doctor has absolutely forbidden him to conduct this evening. Well, that's extraordinary. So someone else is taking over. Yes. Just look around you. The place is crowded to the rafters. I can't see one empty seat. Yes, there, there's one there. Huh? That, that that lower box, the one nearest the stage. Oh, the box holders are notoriously late. Whoever it is, better hurry. The conductor is raising his baton. I uh, see by the program her first song will be without accompaniment. Uh -huh. Like the one she did in Paris that brought down the house. Here she comes. Oh, she's magnificent. She never looks so beautiful. Kathy, look at Billy. Poor Kathy's crying. Well, at least he's letting it out. Look who just walked into that empty box. Svengali. He can see us. He's looking right at us. Oh, would you clap your eyes on that face? Strange, isn't it? As though it were frozen into a laugh. Truby, Truby, sing, my sweet. You don't need to keep looking at him. Music is in your heart. Sing. Sing. Oh, she's, she's opening her mouth, but... Good Lord, it looks like she's trying to sing, but no sound's coming out. I can't take my eyes from Svengali. His eyes, they're glazed, unseeing. Truly sing, you don't need him. For God sakes, sit down, woman, have a thing. Oh, she's fainted. Billy, come back here. He's on the stage. Kathy, look in the box. Svengali has fallen over. Can't move an inch backstage here. Yeah. Well, this, this is the door, sir. Yes, who is it? Billy! 
How did you make it here before we did? Come on, Toby. Toby was just singing Ben Bolt to me just now. Oh, Charlie, dear. And Sam. <laughs> oh, what is all this about? Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Imagine what a surprise it was when Billy walked in just a minute ago. Oh, no, am I? Oh, it's been so long, my dear friend. Milby, are you all right? Of course I am. What's the matter? What are those funny looks between you? Why are you all dressed in black with white ties if you're going to a ball? Hmm? Where's Svengali? I, I, I want to go home. Uh, where is home, Truby? I mean, where are you staying in London? Oh, some hotel near Hyde Park. Isn't that stupid of me? I, I can't seem to remember. Where is Svengali? Well, he was in a box, Truby. I, I'm afraid... I, I think he took ill. Dear. Dear little Billy. How pale. How very pale. <laughs> you don't eat enough. Doesn't anybody cook roast potatoes for you anymore? I'm so glad to see all three of you again. Tell me, where are we now? What, what is this place? This, this room, this funny little room with all these mirrors. Where am I? Daffy, I think we ought to take her to Billy's place in Fitzroy Square. He's got the biggest house of any of us. Billy, will you mind? No, of course not. And Trilby, come along with us. We're all going over to Billy's. Oh, I'd love to. Good morning, Trilby. Did you sleep well? Oh, come in. Come in, all three of you. Do you know there was a doctor here this morning after I was up and dressed? He said he was a friend of Billy's. Nice man, but uh, I wasn't sick, so I, I didn't know what he was doing here. Well, he's an old friend and a very fine doctor. I, I just wanted him to see you, Trilby. Oh, I slept marvelously. Is this your house, Billy? They sent me my clothes and the trunk from the hotel so I could get out of that awful Greek or <laughs> Roman thing I was wearing last night. I can't declare I got that. <laughs> Must have been out of my mind to wear that. I can't seem to remember. <laughs> Why do you suppose I wore it? What is the matter with Svengali? Is he dead? <laughs> he must be dead. I, I have a feeling... He is dead. I can see it in your faces. He had heart disease. I'm sorry. He was always very kind to me. Yes, Trilby, he, he, he's dead. No, I was looking at my hands this morning, and they're all black and blue as if somebody had hit them. And I have a terrible bruise on my side. I, I should have told the doctor, because I don't know where I got those. I'm afraid it was Sangali. He struck you while you were rehearsing. Struck me? Rehearsing? What are you talking about? Sangali never struck me. He was kindness himself always. And what would I be rehearsing? <laughs> the songs you were to sing at the Drury Lane last night. Sing at the theater? I never sang at any theater. Oh, was that big place we were in a theater? I did see him. Oh, yes. Sengali, in the box opposite. He was looking so strangely, like he was laughing about a secret or something. And he was staring straight out at me. And then I thought, why is he laughing at me? Oh, it's fuzzy in my mind like a bad dream. What was it all about, Billy? Was it a dream? Trilby. What? Don't you remember singing in Paris at the South Pleiel, and in Vienna, and St. Petersburg in the Winter Palace? You're pulling my leg. What nonsense. Now you're thinking of someone else. You were never in those places? Oh, yes, I was. We were in Vienna and St. Petersburg, Svengali and I. He played everywhere. <laughs> but I never sang there. Good heaven. Truby, <laughs> can you remember how long you've been married to Svengali? Mm -hmm. Months. I mean, years. I, I, I forget. You know, I looked for him in Paris when I was so awfully sick. I was much worse than that time in your studio, remember? When he cured me? Was it the same old neuralgia? Oh, no, much worse. I, I, I went it sort of crazy when my little brother, Johnny, died. And this terrible 
pain in my head. Funny, isn't it? Poor Svengali. Tell me how he died. Quite suddenly, I believe. Oh, I hope he hadn't much pain. Billy? Billy, what are you doing over by my trunk? Oh, nothing. Oh, yes, you are. You found something. What is it? Just a picture. Well, let me see it. I want to see it. Bring it here. Oh. I've never seen that picture before. How did it get in my trunk? And the... And Marta put it there before we left Paris. Look, Taffy. Sandy. Oh, it's a splendid photograph of St. Gally. He, uh, he must have been quite young. But the eyes are the same. Those big black eyes with all the white showing. I'm so very tired. I'm sitting here so very many people around me. Why are they crying? I don't like to make people sad. My dearest Truby, how like an angel you sang. Why are you all crying? Because you have been singing so beautifully. I have been singing? Oh, yes. For the past quarter of an hour. It was like a voice from heaven. Well, I feel so tired. I don't think it's quite fair of you to joke with me when I'm so very tired. I was singing just now. Holding on to that picture of Svengali and singing your little heart out. I'm, I'm so tired. Um, do you mind, dear friends, if I just close my eyes? You, you go on talking. I don't mind that. Truby. Billy. Is she asleep? Truby. His photograph. It slipped out of her hand. Svengali. Svengali. Oh, good Lord. Is she dead? Incredible as it may seem, he said that Trilby had been dead for at least half an hour. Dead for the past half hour. That would mean from the moment she had begun to sing her last song. This extraordinary story is not quite over yet. I'll tell you the rest in a few minutes when I return. Not long after the death of Trilby, little Billy known to the world as artist William Baggett, also died. His close friend said he could not bear the memory of Trilby dying with Svengali's name on her lips. They say he died of a broken heart. And that is the end of the story. The strange account of the most beautiful singing voice the world had ever heard and the fantastic haunted man by the name of Svengali breathed musical life into the soul of his trilby, and when he died, took that soul with him. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Ian Martin, Mandel Kramer, and Gordon Gould. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater.